We've looked through all 51 of iRacing's weekly road series so that you don't have to. We've considered car enjoyment, track list, participation, racing quality, and some je ne sais quoi qualities, with the goal of giving you a short list of series you're guaranteed to enjoy. Let's start at the beginning and the rookie series, everyone's first foray into the world of iRacing. The Mazda MX-5 has been the perennial home of rookie class racing, and this is largely still the case. However, these days, we have two more options to choose from in the forms of the Formula V and the Formula 1600. For all three rookie series, the cars and circuits come included as part of the service once you have an iRacing subscription. All three series provide great racing in fun cars, and there's always a full grid for you to race against. Plus, they're fixed setup, so just hop in and start lapping. Despite the healthy grids and great racing in the stalwart Global Mazda MX-5 Cup, we would recommend the Formula 1600 as our pick of the bunch. The hourly 12-minute duration races split at least three times every hour of the week, so you are guaranteed a close race with similarly paced competitors. The reason the Ray FF1600 is the way to go in our eyes is because of the car. Introduced to the service this season, it's a blast to drive and hits a sweet spot that not many other cars can. It's fast enough to be fun, but it remains unintimidating to newcomers. It's relatively easy to get the car around the track safely and has very few driving quirks that can catch you out. Once you get comfortable and start to chase lap times, it rewards good driving. Trail braking is effective and carrying minimum speed is crucial for performance, but without the need to deviate from a classical driving style, this will leave newcomers in good stead with transferable skills as they graduate to the cars used in the higher classes. Plus, the racing is awesome and slipstreaming battles are ever present. You want a rookie series to act as a gateway into the plethora of racing available as you graduate up the ranks and the Formula 1600 is highly addictive so it fits this bill perfectly. Congratulations, you've been promoted to Class D and as a reward for your hard-fought upgrade, you now have 15 series to choose from. Too much choice, I hear you cry. Fear not, young iRacing Padawan, I shall guide you. To make this easier, I've broken the series down by car type into front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive and single-seaters to cater for all. In the front-wheel drive camp is the Renault Clio Cup. Again, fixed setup, so no need to bother getting a vehicle dynamics qualification just yet. Being front-wheel drive, we have the luxury of not worrying about looping the car on corner exit, thank goodness. But in its place, we have the pleasure, the privilege of understeer. Understeer whenever, wherever, and however much you want. But herein lies the beauty. Taming this understated beast requires exceptional finesse, with throttle, brake, and steering in perfect harmony. Furthermore, its approachability means that this car is great for irating noobs, giving you the comfort to push your own limits. Let's not beat around the bush. This car holds no outright lap records. It is slow. However, again, this plays to its advantage because it means you can race closely and the slipstream keeps the pack together. Hence, it makes it into our list of recommendations. Also, it's a perfect introduction into the world of touring cars should you wish to branch into that arena. On to rear wheel drive. As Dave Cam has already described in last season's roundup of the GR86 Cup, that series is a blast and would be worthy of a place in this list. However, I'm going to suggest something a little different. Hear me out on this one. The Ferrari GT3 Challenge is our first foray into the world of GT3 racing in the 2020 Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo. This series boasts short, punchy 15-minute races around some of the world's best circuits. It's an adrenaline fueled ride. The only pitfall of this series is that due to the fast and frenetic car and race format, surviving lap one can sometimes be a lottery. However, using your head and surviving lap one will often result in a rewarding race. Should you improve and grow your eye rating, the races at the front of each grid are great and some very skilled drivers often frequent these lobbies. Furthermore, the GT3 community in iRacing is massive and this is your first opportunity to taste that buttery 500 horsepower goodness with just enough help from the electronics to keep you on circuit most of the time. And now, single seaters. For those of you who don't think passenger seats and roofs belong on race cars, the Formula D series, or iRacing's F4 equivalent, is our pick for you. The two Formula D series, fixed and open setup, are both popular with splits around the clock. A 20 minute race goes green at 45 minutes past every hour, one hour being the fixed setup series and the next hour being the open setup group. You could pretty much race back to back for 24 hours a day if you so wish, and this is part of the appeal. You can have three or four competitive races in an evening. Furthermore, the fixed setups iRacing produces for this car are generally very good, and plenty good enough to just use in the open setup races without an issue at most circuits. It's certainly possible to achieve podiums in top split races even without as much as looking at a damper setting or wing angle. 
A signature of lower category slicks and wings racing is close battling, and due to this car's diminutive size, even the smaller tracks make for great side-by-side -side slipstreaming action. I love the racing in this series, and it's my go-to if I fancy a race but don't have a lot of time to practice or wait around. It's also a great place to start learning the driving techniques needed for faster machinery with more aerodynamics. In fact, many of the world's top junior racing drivers are often seen honing their skills in these races. Also, psst, bonus tip. You can make the halo transparent in the garage settings, even in the thick setup races. Now on to Class C, and by far the road class with the most options. Class C has 22 series to choose from, and this class grows not just in numbers, but also in variety. We now have more team and multi-class options. Also, many of our racing special events fall into this class, but for simplicity, we'll be sticking to standard solo races for now. Graduating from the IRO4 car in Class D, the next logical step is the Formula C series. There are separate fixed and open setup options, so with an opportunity to race every hour, they come in thick and fast. The Dallara F3 is based on the 2017 F3 chassis used in the archived official FIA European F3 Championship. This car is all about downforce. It's light, it's nimble and produces a ridiculous amount of grip in medium and high speed corners, but can be a little skittish in slow corners. Probably the hardest car to master so far in this list, it will certainly bite you should you even step a fraction offline or get too greedy with entry speed or throttle on exit. The racing itself is a tale of two halves. As we all know from Formula 1, the more downforce, the harder it is to follow closely. And the same is true in this series to some extent. However, the toe is very powerful thanks to its relatively high drag to power ratio, so planning and setting up a move for a long straight is your best option. Overtaking is slightly less frequent than its smaller Class D sister, however, in this car it's more a battle of the mind. Making a mistake can so easily cost you up to a second, so the challenge is maintaining a consistently fast pace for the duration of the 25 minute races. You will regularly find drivers in top splits with I rating north of 7k. Big names from the world of esports and real world racing often pop in for some fun, largely due to the challenge and reward of pushing these cars to the edge in competition. A couple of notes before taking on the Formula C series. These cars will take time and effort to get anywhere near front running pace. They require a very specific driving style that doesn't transfer from many other cars and you'll have to persevere if you want to find those final few tenths. Be prepared to spin a lot before you win any races. However, once you do master this machine, few cars are more rewarding and that's why it deserves a place in this list. Juxtaposing the Formula C race series is the Porsche Cup, again with fixed and open setup options. This car almost couldn't be more different to drive than the Formula C. This is not necessarily a bad thing. Despite its high performance, it achieves its lap times in a completely different way. The Porsche 911 GT3 Cup 992 is equally difficult to get to grips with. Fast in a straight line, but a handful in the corners, if not approached in the right way, this car will almost certainly take time to get used to. Porsche's trademark car layout with the engine somewhere near the car behind you means that once a slide begins, it isn't arrested very quickly. You may find yourself doing more than the occasional donut if you don't get the corner hooked up perfectly. The high top speeds and long braking zones mean racing in this series is very much possible, and this is also demonstrated by the pros. Many people stick to this series and race it almost exclusively. It splits most hours of the week and attracts some of the highest average strengths of fields in any of the series on the service. You're almost guaranteed a competitive race. Now on to Class B. Class B is when we see the number of series reduce as we get to the pointy end of the scale in terms of license classes. Despite there being only 7 series to choose from, I am still going to be recommending 3 options as I think they all offer something completely different and cater to different races. Starting with the IMSA Racing Series. The official IMSA Racing Series is the first mention of multi-class racing in this list and you have 3 classes to choose from. The BMW M Hybrid VA LMDH, the Dallara PT17 LMP2, and a choice of the Audi, BMW, Lamborghini, Porsche, Ferrari and Mercedes GT3 machinery. These 45 minute races require one pit stop, and have a class separated rolling start and are a whole heap of fun. This is my favourite series on iRacing, full stop. I usually race in the LMP2, but no matter your class, it produces exceptional racing. Not only are the grids full most hours of the day, the strength of fields are high and the racing is therefore usually very close. The beauty of this format is that even if the race settles down, it's only a matter of time before you start catching or being caught by other classes. The pit stop adds an element of strategy to the race too. Do you fuel save and try to undercut your competition? Do you pit before you hit traffic? It's all up to you. If you like GT3s, this is another option and a format to race alongside the solo series. The BMW is the current LMDH Le Mans hypercar. It's hugely fast and fun to car through the traffic in. Finally, the LMP2. 
Ah, the LMP2, which in my opinion is iRacing's best car. I love this thing and if you haven't tried it, you should, it's brilliant. For me, it has the perfect balance of performance, drivability and setup options. It's fast but has a raw driving experience, with traction control but no ABS, high downforce but good low speed grip. On top of this, you're passing GT3s at the same time as keeping an eye on the mirrors for those BMW hybrids behind. All this while lapping at roughly the same speed as an F2 car. 45 minutes flies by. Now, I couldn't compile a list of the best series on iRacing without touching on one of the most healthily participated and competitive series on iRacing, the Open Setup GT Sprint. The Open Setup series are comprised of 40 minute races, with most races throughout the week splitting at least five or six times. And with eight GT3 beasts to choose from, you're bound to find the car you like. You can change car depending on the week, or you can pick your favorite and stick with it all season. The balance of performance is generally even, and while some circuits do suit specific cars, Unless you are challenging for wins in the top split and good luck with that, you will have a close race in whatever car you choose. With this series being open setup, you will likely want to gain some extra speed over the iRacing setups provided. There are usually setups posted in the iRacing official GT3 series forums for you to try for free, or you can subscribe to one of the many available setup shops and Discord servers that are around these days. Or lastly, you can have a crack yourself. This will take time and some getting used to if you don't have a lot of experience, but it makes it even more rewarding when you achieve a good result. There is a smaller sister in the form of the fixed setup series, but these races are only 20 minutes long and tend to lend themselves to a bit more carnage. So my recommendation is the open series if you had to pick just one, which of course you don't. Third on the Class B list is the Formula B series, which uses the ludicrous Formula Renault 3.5 cars from the mid 2010s. These cars are awesome. A naturally aspirated 530 horsepower 3.5 litre V8 engine that revs to 9,000 RPM in a Dallara single seater chassis with some of the biggest wings you will ever see on a ground based vehicle, weighing a mere 711 kilograms with driver. This car was a rival to Formula 2 back in the day. The medium and high speed performance of these cars is amazing. Hot lapping is a dream and racing is equally thrilling. The racing is enhanced by the use of DRS, eight times per 35 minute race, adding some strategy into the mix. Do you use it early and build the gap or save it for the end of the race in a last lap lunge? Finally, the sound is mega. Despite the iRacing rendition not quite doing the real version justice, it still sounds great and I can't think of many better soundtracks to race to. Participation is decent, but nothing of the likes of IMSA and GT3. I've included it because it's so fun to drive at that speed and just has a little je ne sais quoi about it. Give it a go, we'd love to hear your thoughts. We've progressed through the ranks, climbed the ladder and reached the pinnacle of what we can achieve for now. Unfortunately, there are only four series to choose from in this A-Class category. The Formula A Open and Fixed series, mirroring Formula 1 and the European Endurance and European Sprint series, mirroring the European Le Mans series. And that's it. It's a privilege that on iRacing we have the opportunity to race on one of the best models of one of the most up-to-date officially licensed F1 cars in all of sim racing. But disappointingly, the participation in both of the F1 series is below par and rarely splits more than a couple of times a day. The European Sprint Series utilises the aforementioned BMW M Hybrid LMDH, the Dallara LMP2 and six GTE machines. Sound familiar? Well, yes, very similar in format to IMSA in this regard, and unfortunately it doesn't have the same level of participation as IMSA on a regular basis, so as much as I enjoy this series, it misses out for these reasons. However, its cousin, the European Endurance Series, is very much a unique proposition. Unusually for iRacing, this series runs every two weeks, with only three races per round at 7am and 6pm every other Saturday and 2pm Sunday the day after. The cars are the same as its sprint cousin, but these six hour races are a great way to enjoy semi-regular endurance racing and a league style atmosphere while still being an officially recognized race. Six hours is a great length, allowing two to six drivers the opportunity to race together. The races being two weeks apart with three races at different times over the weekend gives teams the flexibility to practice, get prepared and race together despite other life or racing series commitments. Furthermore, the calendar is usually a highlights reel of tracks as when you only need to fill six spots, you can choose only the best. Therefore, my pick for Class A is the European Endurance Series. So go out there, find some teammates, pick a car and race. I promise you won't regret it. 
If you've raced in any of these series we've suggested, or you think I've missed a great series that needs to be considered, feel free to endorse or condemn my suggestions below in the comments. Finally, we have loads more useful iRacing content coming up very soon that will help you budding iRacers and Class A veterans alike. So make sure you're subscribed and have clicked the notification bell so YouTube shows you them when they're released. Thanks for watching and see you on track where I'll be keeping it pinned. Make sure you are too.